Hello everybody and welcome to the coverage of the World Championship Qualifier 2018 in Berlin. I'm here with our very own traveler of the Burning Abyss, Tom Rose. How are you doing, man? Very well. It's good to be here. It's really exciting being back on the coverage. The venue looks fantastic and I'm really excited to get involved with some games of Yu-Gi-Oh! this weekend. Yeah, I'm super pumped to see what's happened. Uh, and on that subject of the, the metagame, what are, what are your expectations for this weekend? What do you think is going to be the deck to beat? Obviously, throughout national season, we've seen loads of Sky Strikers, and we're still going to see Sky Strikers in everything. One of the biggest contenders has been this Trickstar deck. It doesn't do very much, but it does so very consistently, and when it can take some free wins with the uh, Reincarnation Droll and Lock combo as well, it's still something that's really scary and you've got to watch out for it, but absolutely, I think Gouki is going to be taking more of the hot seat this weekend. We've seen a lot of new developments with particularly the new cards in Battles of Legend, Relentless Revenge. We have Gumbla Dragon threatening to take yes. away cards from people's hands. We have Living Fossil coming in as a new hot choice for the second equip spell that you play for your Assault. And there's just so many interesting texts coming about. Uh, obviously the reprint of Aquadolphin in that same set. We see people looking to things like Defrag Dragon and Gilosaurus to play a more Invoker-centered build. There's so much new development to that deck, and the power of an extra link really can't be understated. Even against a deck like Trickstar, not hugely reliant on the extra deck, if you can cut off half of the board before they even get to play their first card, there's not a lot that they can do to fight back from that kind of position. Yeah, that's really rough, and that's super interesting to see how just a couple of weeks ago, Gyoki was the deck everyone was scared of, but not the deck everyone wanted to play. And now this weekend, it's considered to be the biggest contender, following on from its success from the North American WCQ. Uh, outside of the Gyoki deck, um, what else do you think is actually going to stand up to it? So maybe perhaps Pendulum, uh, we saw success at the UK National Championships and also second place at the NAWCQ. Uh, well, yeah, what, what are your thoughts? Um, Pendulum can provide a strong counter. They can build really good boards with lots of interaction if they win the die roll. Yeah. But if they don't, they are stuck in an awful place. What we see a lot with Pendulum decks is that they have to fill their deck list with Pendulum cards. You can't afford to be playing six or even on nine hand traps we see from other decks yeah. that you need to be able to stop the Gouki player from resolving that extra link. If you extra link a Pendulum player, they have already lost. Yeah, I mean, that's, uh, I think, one of the number one things this weekend is considering what's, uh, how are you stopping the Goki deck getting to its field? It's not even about uh, breaking the board. I think some people are writing that off as a strategy and just saying, okay, I need to, they need to not get to that point. Yeah, I think the safest strategy is certainly trying to prevent the board rather than solve it afterwards. Even cards like Evenly Matched are unable to break through a, a Trigate Wizard, so... Unless you have a uh, Winged Dragon of Ra Sphere mode, which we see a lot of inside decks, but there's no way you could risk playing that in the main. Yeah. Game one can be a write-off if you lose the die roll against that matchup. Uh, considering the differences between North America and uh, European territories, uh, Link Rebo is one of the big subjects where a lot of players have said, will the Goki deck be as successful in Europe because it's lacking one of the key cards it needs for the extra link? So Link Rebo is a very forgiving card for the Gouki players. It makes the extra links much easier to achieve if you're playing in North American territories, but by no means does that mean that we can't do those plays in Europe. It takes a bit more planning with your combos, with your board yeah. management, but all of the combos starting off from that Isolde resolution, if you're not interrupted, there's nothing standing in your way. The power of Firewall Dragon is just so ridiculous that it doesn't matter that you had to put an extra monster into that nightmare to then link away for the second mermaid. Sure, it took one card more, but that's just one card less from your seven card hand after you've been drawing and adding back your divine sword. And Yeah, yeah, it's that's interesting. It'd be, it'd be good to see if it plays out this weekend. And uh, I guess to round out the discussion, uh, the deck you won the UK National Championships with, Dante's Cat, as you dubbed it, uh, what are your thoughts on that, uh, considering the changes? Like, with Goki coming in uh, much higher, are we likely to see more things like Abyss Dweller? Would your deck from that event work here this weekend? Uh, if I were playing the event, I would still be playing that deck. Right. Uh, I was considering some changes that I would make from the build that I played at UK Nationals, and I would certainly be respecting Goki most of all with those changes that I make, because it is 
one of the hardest matchups. And at the time, I was fortunate. I only played it twice, and I drew very well in those matchups. I had Droll and Lockbird when I needed it. Uh, but if you don't have the ability to stop that Go keyboard from resolving, you can't break through. And I think any player that wants to enter this event with Burning Abyss will be very scared of playing second into that kind of board. Okay, Tom, thank you for your thoughts. And everyone, please stay with us for more coverage for the WCQ 2018 Berlin.